What has God said about you in the month of April? I want you to personalize it. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. My God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. That's what God says it will do for you and it will do it for you. God guarantees to supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Not according to my purse. So it doesn't matter what I have and don't have. If I send you on an assignment and I say to you, uh, this is an open check, just take this check along. Whatever you need on this journey, just fill in the blank. Tell me what you need. It could be $5 million, it could be $1 million. Some could say $50,000, some could say $10,000. But I know you, you will write $5 million. You will try ten. You will write twenty. Somebody say $100 million. Somebody say $1 billion. <laughs> So we have an open check before our father this month. And it says it will supply all. Is God able to do it? Yes. The resources of the nations depend on him. He is the sustenance for all nations. Canada, for instance, we, we, one of the resources we have is oil. Who put it there? God. God, our Father. God, our Father. He put it there. I understand also that the United States is making effort to catch one of these things that fly around. And it's worth trillions of dollars. It's full of all manner, all manner of, of, uh, of precious things. They are trying to catch one. Who owns them? My father. Your father, my father. So he's the wealthiest of all. He can do all things. So if I were you, I would have no need, no worry. No worry about anything. Why? Because it says he will supply all our needs according to his riches in glory through Christ Jesus. So, but please understand, that supply will come only in Christ Jesus. It's not outside of him. Outside of Jesus, there will be so much struggle. There will be so much frustration and, you know, People will be worried and troubled and look for health, run helter skelter. But God, that's, God has not designed my life for struggle. Tell somebody, God has not designed my life for struggle. <laughs> Isn't the choir looking so beautiful this morning? Yeah. I understand that one person bought all of this for them. So let's stretch forth our hands towards the choir. And let's bless the person God has used to supply this. I mean, a time is coming when somebody, one of you, one of you, will say, Pastor, does the church need a brand new boss? I'm writing the check. Those who are going to do it are already lifting up their hand and saying amen. A time is coming when there will be no need in the house of God. You will look at things, you will write a check, one million dollars. Joy overflow, go and buy a building. And that person that will do it is lifting up his hand. And it's taking it in the name of Jesus. So stretch forth your hands. See, when you see small, small things happen, the Bible says, do not despise the days of little beginning. Somebody bought this love seat. And I told you, this seat is, is giving me some concern. <laughs> because every time I sit there and... and, and, and... <laughs> okay, let's, let's stretch forth our hands towards the choir. And let's bless whoever God has used to provide this. Father, in the name of Jesus, the daughter of Zion, who has blessed the choir with this, we decree in the name of Jesus. This is the start of great things. Lord, we recognize this as your hand. We decree your blessing, overflowing blessing, upon this life of the daughter of Zion, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' precious name we pray. For your information, is the same person that provided this that is providing this too. The Lord bless her and cause his face to shine upon her. And you are the next online to be used mightily of God to bless his kingdom in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, except that the ushers are looking gorgeous. Praise God. And what I have against the ushers and choir, I don't have. You need to give me a copy of this. Praise God. <laughs> you have it for me? Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, why will all your needs be met? Why? 
The reason is that 2,000 years ago, the work of your redemption, of your salvation, Jesus, staying on that cross in pain and bearing the weight of your sin and of your sorrow, he said, it is finished. It is finished. It is fin People didn't understand it. They thought he wanted to die. Because after he said that, he gave up the ghost. And what did he go to do? You must understand that be be behind every visible, physical issue, there is a spiritual force. Behind every physical, visible issue of the life of humanity, there is an invisible force behind it. So, on the physical, he gave up his life, but in the spiritual, he went deep to finish that work and take over power from the wicked one. The Bible speaking in Ephesians chapter 4 verse 9. He said, now he that ascended, now that he ascended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower part of the earth. Into the lower part of the earth. He descended into the lower part of the earth. What version is this? I want King James, please. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9. In King James Version. It says, now that he descended, what is it? But that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth. He descended into the lower parts of the earth. What was he doing? He went beyond the grave into the deep, to the dungeon of hell. Where Moses, where Abraham, where all the saints of old that died were hell. They were awaiting their redemption. The price for their iniquity was not paid yet. But Jesus paid the price. And when he paid the price, he went to the devil and said, Ye everlasting doors be lifted. And the king, they, they answered, Who is this that is asking the door to be lifted? He said, It's the king of glory. The king of glory. He said, Ye everlasting door be lifted. For the king of glory has come. Hallelujah. And he went to hell. He took the keys of hell and of death from the devil. And he said, I am he that was alive and was dead. And now I am alive forevermore. And I hold in my hand the keys of hell and of death. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's why God qualifies to meet all your needs. Because the work of your redemption had been completed. Matthew chapter 27 verse 50. The Bible says, Jesus, when he cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost, verse 51. It says, and behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom, and the earth did quick, and the rocks rent, verse 52. It says, and the graves were opened, and many body of the saints which slept arose, Moses, Abraham, all of them, they were waiting, and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many before they went to glory. So when Jesus was on the cross and died, when his blood hit the ground, the graves burst open. The saints of God came out and were awaiting his resurrection because he's the firstborn from the resurrection. So after his resurrection, then they arose and went into the city. Because Jesus arose, whatever is yours that is held down by the kingdom of darkness, I command it loosed. I command the graves broken. I command your inheritance released. In the name of Jesus. So after his resurrection, the grave has no more power. And that's why the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 54, 55, 57, it says, Oh, grave, where is thy victory? Oh, death, where is thy sting? Hallelujah. Jesus already won the victory for us. Praise the Lord.
Now, for today, we'll be looking at this message titled, Obtaining My Inheritance by the Force of Prayer and Fasting. Let's say it together. Obtaining My Inheritance by the Force of Prayer and Fasting. And our anchor scripture is 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. In King James, here is what it says. Now thanks be unto God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the service of his knowledge in every place. That sounded like old English. So I went into a newer English in the NLT, and here's what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. It says, but thanks be, but thank God. He has made us his captives and continues to lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. procession. Now, he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. Praise God. So, he has us in a procession, his triumphal procession. Procession. In other words, when he rose from the grave, he set up a procession. In other words, he set up, he lined up captivities captive. The devil and all his agents, he took them captive. Now, in those days in the Roman Empire, every time the Romans win a war, they take the captives from war and line them up on the streets. They call an event, a big show, and then bring these captives in chains, you know, bound, hand, and feet, and then they begin to line them up in shame and say, see the people we overcame, see the people we overcame, and the captains who won that war will sit on horseback Together with members of their family in the cart. And then there will be a parade. This is what we did. We were able to take all of these ones captive. Now when Christ rose from the grave, he set up a parade. Now he had you and I in that parade. The Bible says he has made us captives and continues, present continuous things. So lead us along in Christ's triumphal procession. Now he uses us to spread the knowledge of Christ everywhere like a sweet perfume. So you are looking at a sweet perfume. A sweet aroma. After his resurrection, he made you and I a sweet aroma, not a bitter one. Not a bitter one. When you see perfume, except those who are really allergic to perfume or to smell, if you see a good perfume, what do you do? You turn your head and say, wow, where did that come from? Where did that come from? And then you turn. And in fact, some people, last week or so, my wife and I just walked around. I think whether she was the one wearing the perfume or whether it's this boy, I don't know. One lady said, whatever is coming from you two, I don't know, but this smells really good. So when people perceive good perfume, mm, 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 this is awesome. Now, that is who God has made you, a sweet perfume. You come into a place, there is sweetness all around. You come into a place, the light bulb goes on. You come into a place, whether there was death before, life comes in. That's who you are. Yeah. Say, that's who I am. That's Lift up your hand and say, that's me. That's me. That's me. So, he uses us. In other words, the real reason... For the victory that Jesus won on the cross is to use you to spread the knowledge of Jesus. And spread it around like a good perfume. And just spray it out there. Spray it out. In your community, you're a good perfume. In your office, you're a good perfume. In the family, you're a good perfume. Everywhere you go, you're a good perfume. And people are saying, wow, thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your life. That's what you'll be getting from this day forward. Amen. Whatever make men say, Ah, if this one is a Christian, I think I would rather not go to church. That ceases now. Amen. Oh, somebody didn't get that. Amen. 
whatever make people mock your God that has made you, instead of a sweet perfume, to be an odor that is thinking around. Whatever makes you that kind of odor, I stand upon the power of his resurrection this morning and I declare against it in the name of Jesus. The reason I'm doing that is because I can see someone in the spirit. That's why I'm declaring this heart. Don't think I'm stupid or I'm crazy. Say, well, why is pastor shouting this morning? I'm shouting down the devil. Because the completed work of Jesus must be seen in your life. The work that Jesus did to set you free and make you a sweet aroma must be completed in your life. And I see it being completed right now in the name of Jesus. So everything that has held you captive and made men mock your God, after this service, it has come to an end. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. So in summary, trying to introduce this topic, God gives you and I constant victory in all situations so that you and I can be a faithful witness of his power at work. In the family, in the neighborhood, everywhere we go. He gives us constant victory. He never allows you and I to be defeated. Because like I tell us, there is no good father that will see his son or daughter downcast and will leave him like that. No. No. Your father did not design you for sorrow. He did not design you to be a pity among men. He designed you to be an envy among men. And whatever makes you live short of this, I break it all over you. In the name of Jesus, you should be envied not to be pitied. Stop pitying yourself. Stop making men pity you. Carry yourself because you have a great God who has completed the work of redemption. What Christ went through, think of it. They picked him. Philippians chapter 2 verse 8 to 10 tells us clearly. Even though he was God, yet he thought it not robbery to be taken away from that glory. He descended, came down to the earth, and he lived the life of a common criminal. They nailed him to the cross. The Bible says in verse 10, Wherefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above name, that at the name of Jesus, all knees in heaven, on earth, and on under the earth, we bow to that name. That's what Christ did for you. He purchased your redemption. He said, it is finished. And so the work of your redemption is finished. Nothing will make you live less than who God describes you to be anymore. In the name of Jesus. I found this analogy in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. And Jesus was telling us clearly what we are. He said, ye are the light of the world. Ye are the salt of the earth. So what should you do as light of the world? Lighten up your environment. Tell the good news. Go tell it on the mountain. And over the sea and everywhere. Go tell it everywhere. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That Jesus Christ is Lord. That he arose. That no more. Power is no more in the hand of the devil. He lost it completely when Jesus took the key from him. So he cannot have you. Satan cannot have you. You are not subject to Satan. You are not. You are not. If Jesus did not arose, we will be telling a different story. But he arose. He arose. He arose. He arose. arose. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. So here is what Jesus said you are. He said, ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill. He said, will I put on a light and put it under a bushel? And will it give light to the whole house? No. He said, so let your light so shine before men. That they may see your good work and glorify your father in heaven. Brethren, wake up. You are the light of the world. Stop looking at that man or that woman. No, you are the one, the object of focus. Everywhere there is light, it, even animals, even insects, they gravitate towards light. 
Everywhere there is life. Insects, you will see them. That's where they want to go. So the world is waiting to gravitate towards you. That is why the Bible says, it said the endless expectation of, the, of, 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 of creation are waited. The manifestations of the sons and daughters of God. Sons and daughters of God, wake up. The victory is in your hand. Your victory is already declared. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. He said you are the salt of the earth. He said when salt loses its value, it is not worth more than sand. People will put it on the floor and walk over it. If you take out light and salt from the earth, what do you have? Darkness and bitterness. So that's why, brethren, at the sound of the trumpet, you must make it. 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 Because when the saints are taken out of this earth, darkness comes upon the earth. Bitterness. That sweetness that salt provides is gone. That light, that light and beauty that light provides is gone. So while we are on this earth, be the light of the world. Be the salt of the earth. Salting people. Don't you ever get into a group and because of you, that group scatters. That's bitterness. When you get into the group, repair the broken altar. Mend fences. Cause people to relate well with another. Don't be an object of shame and pain. Don't. That's not who you are. You are the light of the world. When light comes in, darkness is shattered. Enter in a place and let the light bulbs go on. And where people were sad before, when you enter in there, bring joy. There is something in you that exhumes joy if you allow it. There is something in you that exhumes joy. There's something in you my name is Sonny. And people say, oh, you're sunshine. Yeah, I say, yeah sunshine. As I, as I step in here, there should be sunshine. The light bulb should go on. You are sunshine. We all have the same name. <laughs> we all have what? The same name. Who are you? Sunshine. The light of the world. The light of the world. The salt of the earth. The light of the world. The salt of the earth. Never you forget that. And so everywhere you turn into, let the light bulbs go on. Bring life to your environment. Bring joy to people around you. Be a blessing to humanity. Stop causing pain. Stop making people worry about you. No, that's not who you are designed to be. You are designed to be the light of the world. And let your light so shine that they may see your good work and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Praise God. Now, I want to quickly tell us how to obtain our inheritance by the force of prayer and fasting. Now, as a church, one of the things that the Lord told us from the beginning is every quarter, open up every quarter by seven days prayer and fasting. Speak into the quarter. Prophesy into the quarter. Take it. And that is why we have amazing testimonies coming from the hand of God in those meetings. Coming from the hand of God in those meetings. And from inception up to now, this has been our pattern. Every quarter we wait upon the Lord in the first full week. We decree and make decrees. Lord, this quarter we command it to be open. We establish our dominion in the quarter. That's why we don't run helter-skelter in any quarter. No. So, how do we do it? We fast and pray from Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. On Monday through 
Friday, of Thursday, we meet at 6.30 p.m. daily. And on Friday, we break our fast at home at about 6 p.m. And then we come here from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. And on Saturday in the families, we pray and commit our personal family matters unto God. And on Sunday, we thank God still in the fast for the awesome month a quarter that is opening up before us. That's what we have been doing. And have we been getting testimonies? Amazing testimony. Lift up your hand and wave it to the Lord and say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we establish our dominion through this. So another one is here. The second quarter fasting and prayer is here. Now, Hebrews 11.3 tells us, it says, through faith we understand that the walls were framed by the word of God. So what we do in that week, we frame our world in that quarter by the word of God. We declare what we want to see. We declare what we want to happen. And that is exactly what happens to us. Now, let me make you understand that your inheritance and my inheritance will be contested by the devil. Your inheritance will be contested by the devil. The devil rose up in heaven. The Bible says there was war in heaven. So God, Satan was trying to contest God's inheritance. He was trying to withstand God. And the Bible says there was war in heaven. The devil fought and his angel fought. And Michael fought and his angel. And, they, and the devil overcome it not. And they were overcome and were pushed down to the earth. So is that right here? That old man that is over 6,000 years is here. And what is he doing? The Bible calls him the accuser of the brethren. He goes to God and says, God, did you see him now? Did you hear what he just said? Did you hear what he said? He's cursing. He, he, he was cursing somebody while he was driving. So that's what the devil does. He is the accuser of the brethren. So he will contest your inheritance. He contested the inheritance of Jesus. For 40 days, he withstood Jesus. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, he take him to the pinnacle of the temple. He take him and showed him the whole world. He take him, he take him, but he leave him. And just like I pray for someone, every devil that take you will leave you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Deuteronomy chapter 2 verse 24. The Bible says, rise ye up, take your journey, and pass over the river Anon. Behold, I have given unto thy hand Sion, the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land. Begin to possess it and contend with him in battle. And I once asked us, when you want to own a thing, where do you start from? Is it first contend or possess? Contend. You contend and you possess. But here, look at what it says. Possess it and contend. In other words, if you can see it, you already have it. In the eyes of your spirit, possess it. So every inheritance that you will get, if you can see it here, it will be in your hand very shortly. Amen. What are you seeing? Begin to have pictures of that glorious thing you are asking for. Possess it first in the spirit. That's what he told them. He said, possess it, and then if any devil rises to contend, then contend with him. And I decree in the name of Jesus, every contention against your glorious destiny shall be defeated. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, God also covenanted to bring out the children of Israel from 430 years of bondage. Look at what he said in Exodus 2, 23 to 25. He said, and it came to pass in the process of time that the king of Egypt and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage and they cried. And their cry came to God by the reason of the bondage. Verse 24. And God heard their groaning and remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. And in verse 25, see what it says. And God looked upon the children of Israel and God had respect unto them. Now, that's graphical, right? He remembered the promise. He remembered what he was going to do. Why didn't he just kill Pharaoh and bring out the children of Israel? Does, didn't he have the power to do it? He did have the power, and he does have the power. But he wants that spiritual contention. Because the process of contending for what belongs to you, it's a spiritual process. It's not a physical process. 
is a spiritual process. So this quarter that is opening up, there is a lot that God said he has in stock for you. He has started us with this month. He said, I will supply all your needs. It's a covenant. It's a promise. But listen, the devil will contend. Contend it. He will contend it. So what do you do? Stand on your faith. So now, the truth of is in Exodus 7.1. And the Lord said to Moses, See, I have made thee a God to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. In verse 2, thou shalt speak. Thou shalt do what? Thou shalt speak. So there is no contention that will not require you to speak. Thou shalt speak. Thou shalt declare. Thou shalt say it. This job, I am getting it. This man in this office that is a trouble to me, you are leaving this office for me. You call his name in the middle of the night. You nail his head. You give him a knock. And in the name of Jesus, you've been a pain to me. I crush your head. Amen. On Monday morning, when he sees you, he will be afraid. Amen. He will have a day, he won't recover. And Monday morning when he sees you, he will dodge. <laughs> After all, he's not present where you are. You, there's a place that God has placed you as a child of God. It's, it's, it's far above principalities. Far above the rulers of the darkness of this world. And in Isaiah chapter 54, verse uh, 10, it says, In righteousness shalt thou be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression. And from terror he shall not come nigh you. Is that in your Bible? So, that's where you are. Somebody is challenging you and you're keeping quiet. You have to speak. He said, thou shalt speak as hard as Pharaoh was. He said, Moses, I have made you a God to him, but you have to speak. Thou shalt speak every word that I put in your mouth. Thou shalt speak. What is the word that the Lord has put in your mouth? The scriptures. You shall speak the word. You shall speak. What is the purpose of God for your life? Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. I know the thoughts that I have towards you. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you a future and a hope. So speak the word of, of peace to your future. You have to speak. You have to learn to speak. You have to learn to make his word your own word. You have to transcribe pro, through the process of meditation. Transcribe his word and begin to speak his own word. As you speak the word. The season say, oh no, I can't hold him anymore. And that's what happened to Pharaoh. God said, I remember my covenant. I have to bring out these people. But he required a man to stand before Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, let my people go that they may serve me. So what are you saying about the challenges that are facing you? What are you saying about the future, the glorious future that God has for you? This is another season we are stepping into. The season of fasting and praying. The season of standing to speak. Praise God. Now, please understand. There is some level of violence in the spirit that is required to take what belongs to you. Matthew chapter 11 verse 12, and from the time days of John the Baptist, until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. By force. By force. In 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 6 to 7, it said, but the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away. The word Belial there means evil. That is the children of darkness. They shall be like thorns that, that, shall trust, that is thrust away because they cannot be taken with mere hands. You cannot approach the gate of hell with mere hands. You cannot. And what did he say? What's the recommendation in verse 7? He said, but the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear. The process of waiting upon the Lord to receive strength is what makes you like iron. When iron comes against thorns, it crushes it. So whatever kingdom of darkness is contesting your inheritance, you just be iron and the staff of a spear. He said you shall utterly burn them with fire in the same place. So this week for you is so crucial. It's a week of empowerment. It's a week to strengthen your hand and Take what rightfully belongs to you and the sons of Belial that are standing and opposing you, you stand, go to the high place. Moving up to the high places. We're moving up to the high places. 
We're going up to the high places to tear the devil's kingdom down. Let's go up. Praise God. I know the choir want to sing. So let's go up to the high places. Let's tear down the kingdom of darkness. This week is so crucial. Turn to your neighbor and say, this week is crucial to your destiny. It's crucial to your destiny. So the sons of Belial, they are thorns. They spread around you like thorns. But you see, there is a solution. What is the solution? You have a spear in your hand and you'll be like iron. The Bible says you will crush them and you will burn them to pieces. So wake up. That level of violence is required to possess what belongs to you. Look at what the Bible describes the purpose of fasting in Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah chapter 50. He says, it's not this the fast that I've chosen to loose the band of wickedness, to undo heavy bodies, to let the oppressed go free and break every yoke. So this week as we fast and pray, we're going to be losing the band of wickedness. We're going to be breaking every yoke. We're going to let every oppression go free. Every heavy burden that has sat upon your life, we're going to be losing them and breaking them down. That's what we're doing this week. So wake up. Wake up. Some will say, my doctor said I have to have cereal very early in the morning. Oh, oh, your doctor greater than God? Your greater, greater than Jesus? Jesus contested, the devil contested him. And what did he do? Fasting, praying. He took what rightfully belonged to him. He disgraced the devil. And the Bible says the devil liveth him. Every devil will live at you. Amen. I don't mind my English this morning. It's Holy Ghost English. <laughs> Praise God. So, this week is crucial to your destiny and my destiny. We'll be fasting and we'll be praying. We'll be committing this quarter into your hands. And very shortly, you'll become the envy of all. Yeah. Everyone who sees you at the end of this week will know that there is a God in you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. So, we'll be meeting on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We'll be waiting. Why? We are intensifying. We are pushing back Satan lose your grip Satan go back take your dirty hands off our destiny that's what we'll be doing and as we contend I see you victorious I see you victorious in the name of Jesus will, there, will you be tempted not to fast this week yes Hebrews chapter 12 verse 16 to 17 he said let there not be any fornicator or profane person as Esau who for one morsel of meat is sold his birthright and in verse 17, the Bible says that you, for you know that afterward, when he will have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. There's a time to seek. These are market days. This week, the heavens are open. There are market days to bring your ways. Now, if you go to the farmer's market in the southeast... Now, I think they're beginning to open up, right? When do they open? They usually open around... When? They open only on Thursdays. So if you go there on Monday, you'll buy, what, you'll buy birds cry and all of that. So there are market days. There are some markets, they open for a certain period. These are market days for us. When it is market day, all the things you are prepared, you bring them to market. And then there is exchange between buyers and sellers. Heaven is open over us this week. This is the pattern that God has given us. So let's put in everything that we require of God in this week and say, Lord, I'm standing on the line for my house, for my job, for whatever it is. Standing in line. The heavens are open. When you cry this week, it will be heard. So do not be like Esau. Esau, when it was time for him to be blessed, the Bible says he missed it because of one morsel of meat. He sought it carefully with tears. He was doing the right thing at the wrong time. And he found no place for it. May you not be like that. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me share these two testimonies very quickly. One of us says, before now I was 
Okay, I won't mention the name. Now I am Mrs. This. I have come to testify to the glory of God. Ever since I joined this family, my life has turned around to his glory. This is a fruitful ground. In the second quarter of fasting in 2017, during the last night prayer prayers, pastor told us the spirit asked him to tell us to write three things which we wanted and we lay it on the altar. We shouldn't bother to figure it out. We should just believe and obey it. I put three things on paper and we presented them to God at the altar. It didn't take long for two of the three to happen. The first two requests were regarding immigration status of two of my brothers. The following week, one of them called. He told me that he was going for an interview for temporary residence. I told him there was no such thing. It will be permanent. And he agreed with me. The very next day, he called me saying that he, was, he has been given permanent residency status. He was overjoyed. My second brother in the U.S. had submitted an application over four years ago. And his application wasn't even acknowledged. His status was settled the following week. Immigration reached out to him and set a date for the next week. And on that day, his papers were released without asking him any question. The third item on my list was regarding my marriage. Prior to this time, I had selfishly given up on men, and I told myself I would take care of my children by myself. I had limited God so much, but this night I opened up. Say I opened up. I told God that he knows what I want and what is right for myself and my children. I placed my desires in his hand and I want him to show me who my husband is. After this request, I received my peace. What the devil meant for evil, God turned it around. My brother had just died and I was going to go back home to help with the burial arrangements. Upon the day we were to bury him, an announcement went on the radio and my husband-to-be was listening. He had just come home briefly before heading back to work. And that was how he got wind of what was happening. We were old friends who had lost touch for over 20 years. But he remembered my family name and said to him, that's an opportunity that I've been looking for. Unknown to me, he made a promise to himself long time back. He would never take any other lady to the altar but me. He arrived at the venue where my brother was being buried. He wasn't able to meet me, but he got my number. When he called me, my heart melted. <laughs> and I began to feel like a kid again. However, I didn't want to make another mistake as I wanted to be sure. So why pray at night for a confirmation from God? His text came, hi baby was what rounded up my prayers. From there, everything fell into place, and early this year, we got married. Shout hallelujah. Hear the second testimony. It said, I've been looking for a job for some time. I took part in the quarterly prayer and fasting in October. After the seven days of prayer and fasting, I was offered a job at Dollarama to work as a sales associate. I accepted the job in faith because pastor has said, anything your hands find to do, start with it and do it faithfully. After three months, say with me, after three months, another quarter, I was called by impact to, be, to interview to be a parking attendant. I got the job. I did both jobs until I was no longer able to continue with Dollarama. Pastor has said sometime that where we are not expecting calls of favor, we will start getting them. I received it. One of the days when my prayer, one of the days when my pay was being signed by my supervisor, he noticed I had tons of customer service experience. And she sent me an email in regards to interview for the position and never applied. I came to Pastor on Wednesday to let him know of the pending interview for the full-time position. He anointed my head and told me, Go! And it was settled. I had the interview, which was more of a casual chat. I went home with my wife and I. We prayed together, believing God for something quick. I was expecting them to call me back on Friday. They didn't call. I called Pastor on Saturday to update him with, that the interview went well. And before I mentioned that they are yet to get back to me, Pastor rejoiced with me over the phone, saying, Praise God! The interview went well. Then he proceeded to say, They will call me. On Tuesday, they called me and asked me to resume the following Tuesday. Praise God. Now, where are these victories coming from? On the prayer altar. So, it's your turn to be celebrated. Amen. This week is crucial. Rise up. Take your journey. Let's go on this one week journey. And then you will come back bearing your sheaves with you. Psalm 126 verse 5 says, He that goeth forth, weepeth, bearing precious seed, shall doubtless 
come again with rejoicing, bringing his chiefs with him. Shall we rise up this morning?